Warning. The contents of this show may offend the sensibilities of those with delicate ears. Travis is pissed off, and there may be cussing. Why? His T-Mobile account got hacked, exposing sensitive data, including his cryptocurrency, into the hands of a thief. Travis will share exactly what happened, and we'll also discuss the latest news surrounding Bitcoin Gold, Bitcoin's twice-removed cousin. It happens right here, right now on episode number 41 of the Bad Crypto Podcast. Travis, do you want to just get the expletives out of the way now? You know, just put your children in the other room, folks. Travis is just going to go ahead and unleash it all now so we can just move forward. Go ahead. You know, I don't know. I'm not, I don't feel like unleashing it quite yet. I think whenever I tell the story, I probably will. But Okay. What, all right. That's fair enough. As a, as a preliminary thing is uh, two-factor authentication. That's all I want to say. And luckily... I got known on my crypto taken, but there's just a huge fiasco today. But this is uh, this is something that's going to be a valuable lesson for everyone who is in crypto today. And spoiler alert, everything turns out okay in the end. So, you know, I, you know, I was going to tease them so they would listen to the whole show and you just like gave it away and now they're going to go and listen to Mike Rowe or something. So <laughs> welcome to the Bad Crypto Podcast. I'm Joel Com. That's Travis Wright. And you are you. And we're glad you're here. Yes, yes. And, you know, next time, Mr. Joel Comp, anytime you have a little hidden surprise that you want to keep for delight, let me know ahead of time so I don't ruin it. <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm good with, you know, this is why we can't have nice things. And I'm, I'm OK with it. I really am. Uh, we are going to talk about some other things on the show today, especially because Bitcoin gold is finally I think it's finally arrived and it's kind of confusing and nobody really knows. But uh, we're going to delve into that and then we will get into your story, which is truly an epic yarn and uh, it continues to unfold. So I'm sure everybody will be interested. But let's go ahead first and jump over to the Bad Crypto Mailbag. Bad Crypto Voicemail. You have one new message. Hey, guys. Uh, the other day you talked a little bit about rumors that Amazon might start accepting Bitcoin. Um, if you are in the know at Amazon and are positive that this is going to happen, and then you go ahead and buy a bunch of Bitcoin, is that considered insider trading? Let me know. Stay bad. Is it? insider trading well thankfully this guy didn't leave his name uh we don't you know this could be a fully hypothetical question but i did some researching because part of what we do on the bad crypto podcast the show for the crypto curious and the crypto serious is we google so you don't have to and you, you want to know what i found travis what did you find I found on the sec.gov site, which is the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission, the definition of insider trading. Well, it says it's a term that most investors have heard and usually associate with illegal conduct. But the term actually includes both legal and illegal conduct. The legal version is when corporate insiders, officers, directors, and employees buy and sell stock in their own companies. When corporate insiders trade in their own securities, they have to report their trades to the SEC. But illegal insider trading refers generally to buying or selling a security in breach of a fiduciary duty or other relationship of trust and confidence while in possession of material non-public information about the security. So I'm thinking that I'm not a lawyer, <laughs> but maybe. Yeah, I don't I don't know about you guys, but I'm I'm not really an insider. I'm I'm more of an outsider. I don't uh, we, we've read some we've read some rumors on the internet. Does that mean we're inside traders? That doesn't make any sense. We're, we're outside, <laughs> as far outside as we can possibly be. I don't know any, I don't, I, do I know anybody that works at Amazon? I don't even know if I know anybody who works at Amazon, period. Uh, I probably am connected to somebody on LinkedIn, but I, I'm as far outside as outside goes. I mean, we're, we're, we're talking rumors. We've not, there's no facts built in that we said that Amazon is at this date. That's, 
It's not happening. He's not asking about us, Travis. He's this is a hypothetical. Oh, he's just he's he, he's asking if someone if a person were to know about something and then they bought stock or crypto based on what they knew. Is that insider trading? Nobody's blaming you or me. There's no finger pointing. I, going I don't know anything right now. I, <laughs> that's a good. That's a good question. I mean, I would assume that if that was the case, the SEC. Pro, I don't know if the SEC has any rules or regulations. Now, have they declared that that Bitcoin is a security? Because if that's the case, then maybe it would be. But I don't know that I've ever seen cryptocurrency. You know, I don't know if it's been declared that it's possible. I'm not sure. Yeah, hard to say. Yeah. So this site here might help. But here's what's really funny about the bottom of the Web page. Again, this is the government website. And after explaining what insider trading cases have been brought to the SEC and and it does list some of the rules about insider trading, it says at the bottom, we have provided this information as a service to investors. It's neither a legal interpretation nor a statement of SEC policy. And you should consult an attorney. So basically, the Securities and Exchange Commission are saying we are not uh, financial advisors and we're not even lawyers. I, I, I'm not even sure. How do they even make a statement? So yeah. Uh, all that to say, I don't know. We don't know. We should we should actually use that disclaimer. We have provided this information as a service for entertainment purposes only. It is legal, n- neither a legal interpretation nor a statement of the Bad Crypto Podcast. If you have any questions, consult somebody else. We may or may not be Joel Common Travis Wright. Yeah, you never know. You never know what happens with Team T-Mobile. We may not be ourselves today. How many? T- how many? Uh, just on another note, how many times have you had your like somebody trying to compromise your identity so far online? Oh yeah, so too many times. And to count. crazy, too many times to count. Yeah, it is. And this may or may not be an email from somebody named Danae or Dennett. Danae asks, "I understand that mathematically the number of bitcoins is limited, but between forks and splits." It seems like an unlimited number could be created. Is this cre- correct? Well, there's no splits. That doesn't happen. That happens in stocks. Between forks, uh, who knows how many forks are going to happen. So, I mean, it's potential that these forks, but there's still only one Bitcoin, right? The other ones that spin off are its own new name. So, I don't know. I don't, you know, it's, who knows? There's- so, that's not correct. Uh, there is 21 million bitcoin there's always been 21 million bitcoin and according to satoshi nakamoto's white paper and vision there will always be 21 million bitcoin Uh, but there could be an unlimited number of other coins that come from forks and from other you know developments but i i think 21 million is 21 million that's true so don't include those forks as part of the bitcoin ecosystem because bitcoin is still bitcoin don't do it and but there is now bitcoin gold and that's our lead story in today's news all right so in the news starting off as joel mentioned bitcoin gold is live the fork has occurred and uh, you can check that out at btcgpu.org OMG, LOL. Um, what, the, what the heck <laughs> website is that? Is that really the yeah. best they can do GP2 for Bitcoin gold? Dot O-R-G. Yeah, yeah. Just like Bitcoin, there's 21 million of these, and uh, it uses a proof-of-work algorithm they're calling Equihash. They are no longer allowing ASIC miners to work uh, like you can on Bitcoin, so they're going back to the GPU days, Right. Bitcoin Cash also allows ASIC miners, so does Segwit2x. So Bitcoin Gold is saying, hey, we still want to allow, you know, people who have a graphics processor uh, card to be able to utilize and be able to mine. Uh, Same thing, 10-minute blocks, same size as Bitcoin. Difficulty adjustment is happening every block. They have Segwit. They have replay protection and unique address format. So it's interesting. If you go to uh, that, their website, you can see how they compare to all of the other ones. And uh, Bitcoin, Bitcoin Gold, Bitcoin Cash, Bitcoin Cash, and Segwit2x. I mean, there's look at all those forks. I, I don't know that anybody really knows exactly what is going on 
with Bitcoin gold. I've read a bunch of stuff today and we could sit here and theorize and pontificate. But honestly, there's just a lot of confusion. And in fact, the story that we saw today on Coindesk is that their website had a DDoS attack. Uh, today. So denial of service, you know, hackers were bringing the site down and uh, trying to silence the voice of Bitcoin gold during this hack. But there's all kinds of questions in the community of whether or not it is uh, robust enough. Uh, one of the things that says on the website here is that it has replay protection. And uh, there are those that are looking at the code on GitHub and saying, we don't see this. This doesn't look secure to us. Um, and so anybody who's had Bitcoin in a wallet where you hold the private keys, you allegedly have Bitcoin gold as well, but there's nowhere to trade it yet, to my knowledge. Have you seen anybody talking about trading it anywhere? Um, well, one of the things is I believe they are some. If you go to their website, you can see that they partnered with a few pools. They have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Um, uh, they have they have all those exchanges in their ecosystem right now, and they have a few pools as well. So there's some partners that are that are on their site. I don't know if those if those exchanges are live and trading yet, but they have ten lined up for trading as soon as that happens. Yeah, I've I've been watching the um, conversation on our Telegram channel, which you guys are invited to come join at badcode.in forward slash Telegram. And it doesn't seem like anybody has actually seen it here. What we do know is that the price of Bitcoin has gone down, but there was actually an article I came across on Mashable.com. It says Bitcoin splits into two again, but owners don't get free money just yet. They're saying on this article that it should be publicly available on November 1st. And so uh, no gold for you. So I did look on Coin Market Cap, Mr. Joel Com, and I see that Bitfenix is trading Bitcoin gold to USD. Binance is, Yobit is. So basically Binance and Bitfenix are the two big ones. It started out, if you look at the chart, because it's already on Coin Coin Market Cap, a BTG is it. And you can see it started out at a little over about $510. And it is currently tanked to uh, $140. So uh, is this futures that they're trading on? I believe these are the actual coins that are that are being traded right now, it appears to me. Well, this article says that they're not available. See, this just lend, adds more to the confusion. Nobody knows what the heck is uh, is going on with this thing. And you are correct. There is a chart. It shows it peaking out at over 500 and then crashing majorly. Like there was a huge sell-off just uh, looks like over the course of 20 minutes, it jumped from, it went from 232 down to 150 and it continues to slide. So, you know, I've not put much stock into uh, into what Bitcoin gold is. There's just been too much FUD around it. And uh, whatever I have is what I have, and it's it's free money, and so I'm not going to complain. About I tell you, it. if it drops down to like fifty bucks or so, I might pick up a few just to see because we'll to play around with it. Who knows? Because you like gold. I love I love gold and silver for sure. They 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 can't be hacked. Well, here's another article about uh, Bitcoin gold, and it's really kind of a slap in the face because Coinbase came out today, and they're saying that they are planning on supporting the Segwit two X fork the hard fork but that they are not planning on supporting bitcoin gold that is their statement they and they, and they say quote information about this fork has been limited and there are concerns about its security and stability as a result we do not believe it's safe to allow support for bitcoin gold at this time yeah and they were saying that bitcoin gold is not even a complete currency yet they're still working out the bugs on it you know it's not ready for prime time and so you know coinbase is really particular about which coins that they want to have access on their platform. They still only allow trading in Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Litecoin. That's it. You know, you'd think they'd have Ripple or some of these other ones that have some legitness to them, but they're not. So, yeah. So, Bitcoin Gold, you're not going to be on Coinbase. Segwit 2X, Will, that's interesting to me. 
the Bitcoin gold uh, shenanigans continue and the story will unfold over time. I'm still holding my Bitcoin cash. You know, we saw it go up to 800 and then it it fell under two, I think. And now it's back at like 320, uh, whatever. I'm, I'm, I'm hodling. That's what I'm doing. Uh, now, from the this one really hacks me off department, uh, you know who um, Jordan Belford is, right? Yes, he is the Wolf of Wall Street. Yeah, they, they made that movie about this guy who uh, basically is a thief and scammed a lot of people, took a lot of money and uh, it's just kind of essentially, a, you know, behaved like a scumbag. And I guess he did his time. And, and now. Uh, he's out and about and getting paid well to speak. And, you know, I have some peers that, you know, they, they take pictures with this guy and they want to meet this guy and they want to see him on stage at, you know, at events. And I'm thinking I'm disgusted by that. Like, why in the world would you give any credence or any support at all to somebody who willingly intentionally hurt so many people. Yeah. I mean, if you've had a chance to see that movie, The Wolf of Wall Street, where Leonardo DiCrapio, as I like to call him, uh, was in that role. Actually, that's a great role that he played. And uh, if, if yeah, that was, was true to form with how accurate the scenario was, I mean, this Belfort guy is just a complete shyster. And for him to be called well, yeah. ICO is the biggest scam ever. And he also said that Bitcoin is a fraud earlier this year. And you know what? There are some ICOs that are not freaking that awesome, right? But, you know, you can kind of tell the ones that suck for the most part. If they look like a shit coin, they smell like one, then don't invest in it. But there's a few of these. I mean, blockchain is going to disrupt 30, 40, 50, 100 different industries. There's going to be those really kick-ass companies who are emerging from this space. They already are emerging. And so to say all ICOs, which he says probably 85% of them, what do you say? 85% probably don't have bad intention, but if 10 to 15% of people out there or 5 to 10% are trying to scam you, that's a disaster. Biggest scam ever. Bigger than penny stocks? Yeah. Like he was scamming people? I don't know. Yeah, he's, he does, he's a disaster. And, you know, what we're doing, because it's sensational, we're giving him space here on the show. But I, I just wanted to kind of call it out. I'm thinking like, I know there's, there, there was just an event happening with some big names that I respect and they were sharing the stage with this guy. And I'm thinking, you know what? There are some places I will not go and I will not share a stage with somebody, you know, who is unrepentant and uh, about the crimes they have committed against humanity. And I just I wouldn't want to be associated with that. But I'm just being judgy McJudgy pants. Uh, and, and I say uh, maybe he knows a scam or two. So hmm. uh, on the other side of the coin, oh, oh. see what I did there? A little token joke. Uh, James Altucher, whose name continues to pop up on the show and probably will until he comes on and speaks with us. Hello, James. Bad crypto calling. Come join us. He, he doesn't really consume content. Really, he creates content and is in his own little world, dude. He, he's a real sharp guy. His, that the, his book that he that came out on um, cryptocurrency one hundred and one, downloaded as an ebook. Great, great, great book. What's interesting to me is that he says in his mind that he's not exaggerating when he thinks that cryptocurrencies are the biggest innovation since the internet. I agree. We're on the ground floor of an enormous trend that's going to change the world. I agree. And how big did he say that cryptocurrencies could be worth one day? He, there's an article here on DailyReckoning.com, and he says cryptocurrencies could be worth $200 trillion one day. Um, he's, you know, I get where he's coming from. I just he really speaks in sensationalism and his copy on you know his website the sales copy is very internet marketing ish it just it kind of surprises me just how sensational he is i'm i'm a big believer in optimism and a fan of crypto uh, and maybe he's right it just seems so explosive that it's kind of hard to right. fathom now if you if you're looking at it says hey here we are right now there's over a thousand cryptocurrencies 
And he says 95% of them are scams for the most part. So that means there's 50 different legitimate cryptos out there right now, which is more than just one, right? That's quite a few. And being able to discern and figure those out, uh, you, it's not not completely impossible to figure those out. There's some really amazing teams working on amazing problems out there. But here's the, here's the thing to, to think about, Joel. So with cryptocurrency where it is right now, where they're not necessarily backed by assets for the most part, I mean, there's some that are like LaToken and some other ones. But like, imagine this, imagine if there was a, you know, uh, let's see here, like a, a Canada oil token that that basically tokenized all the assets of all the oil that's in the ground in Canada. And that cryptocurrency basically supplied the value of exchange for all the oil they have in the ground, right? That's common. The commodity based token assets and tokenizing all these other assets, that's coming. That's you know, especially as more of these uh, countries start having their own sovereign blockchains, there's going to be all kinds of different commodity type tokens. And so I could see where cryptocurrency could easily become worth that that amount of money. I mean, how much is stored in derivatives and all these loans and bonds and, you know, stocks and all this other stuff now? I mean, you combine all of those and then start tokenizing assets, you could get to $200 trillion pretty substantially. Right. It's it's the phrasing. I mean, he even says, I hate to use big numbers like that, but those numbers are facts. OK, I don't think he hates to use big numbers like that at all. I think that, you know, embracing those numbers is part of the uh, the the thesis of uh, this whole article, which he's basically saying, look, I was right at this time and I was right again with this time. And then I was right again here and I'm, I'm going to be right. And because that's what I do. Um, and I get that because you and I have been there and we've, you know, seen the the beginning of things. And even now, those of you that are going down the rabbit hole with us, you see this and you get it. It's just it just sounds really sensational, but it's a great read. And James, we still want you to come on the show. But we're going to follow up with one last news story <laughs> because the show is about to get even heavier. And I'm thinking that we need to laugh a little bit. This is all on Joel, by the way. Yeah, this is all me. Well, somebody posted this on Facebook and they tagged me um, and it'll become apparent why they did in just a moment. It's on ideasfun.com. Man arrested. <laughs> I'm not sure I can get through this. <laughs> After selling farts in jars without a vending license. Uh, it's a short story. It's out of Tennessee. It's a short story. It lasted about half a second. A man. <laughs> a man was arrested it's with the wind a man was arrested for selling his own farts in jars without even having a vending license like i, I like the comma right there you know it wasn't that a man was arrested for selling his own farts in jars without even having a vending license he was caught by authorities which asked if he had permission and the man couldn't answer um, the quote from policeman Gary Coburn was, he was selling farts from different foods and with different ages. With around 150 jars, he was selling farts as old <laughs> as one week. Every jar had around 30% fart and 70% air, although he didn't clarify that to his buyers. This has to be a joke, right? That well, I just want to let him know. I don't know if he knew this or not, but Neo already owns, you know, gas. So... I don't know if he was going to do a, an ICO for his uh, fart jars, but he could have the fart coin. It's available. He could. This can't be real, but I want to believe that it is. And because what we're about to share with you is also very real. And it is the subject of our feature story. So you woke up this morning, Travis, and what happened? Yeah, so so I woke up this morning and I noticed that uh, my phone had no service. I my I had Wi Fi, but it said no service up at the top, which, you know, I I have an iPhone. I've had it for a while. It's a that's happened before. All I need to do is reboot it, typically, and your my internet connection comes back. Well, I also noticed that I was getting alerts that it just kept popping up for me to type in my Apple ID passcode, right? So I typed it in, but that didn't work, and it popped back up again. And I was like, this is obnoxious. I don't have the service, dude. I need to reboot. So rebooted the phone. It happened. It was all, all happened again. And then I noticed I had a text from uh, that I'd received at around 1245 last night. Thank you for allowing me to assist you today. 
Please rest assured that I addressed all the concerns you shared with me, Alex, at T-Mobile. And then I said, oh, shit. Somebody just called T-Mobile and got them to put my phone number on their phone. I go, I bet that's exactly what happened. And so, well, I don't have I don't have phone service on my phone, right? So I had to get on Skype to make the phone call to call T-Mobile. Yeah, it took about 30 minutes and they they were able, they saw that at around, you know, um 12:30 last night somebody called in and uh, apparently they were they said they were me. Somehow they got around my passcode, right? I had a passcode in there and a pen. And I should be notified if somebody's trying to do any editing to my account. They should at least like text one of my other phone numbers or something. So apparently this person contacted them with such such a great story that uh, that they bought it. They bought it hook, line, and sinker. So somehow they got around my passcode and convinced them to switch my SIM, put my number on a new SIM that this guy obviously had, and then connect it to that new device. And they allowed that to happen. And six hours later, I noticed it. Wow. That is not how you want to start your day. Man, there are some bad people out there that don't realize that, uh, you know, you might get away with something like this, but the prisons are full of people that have committed crimes uh, and people don't think they're going to get caught. But there is a paper trail on this stuff. There's recordings of this person's voice because they I'm sure they document everything, you know, for quality control. This call may be recorded. They have everything. But regardless, nobody wants to wake up to this. And apparently this is a an issue specifically you discovered with T-Mobile. And so what uh, what, what's the resolution of this? What happened? What did you have to do? Yeah. So it's one of those things, man. Right. You wake up in the morning and all of a sudden your brain has to go from zero to a hundred miles an hour to try to figure out what's going on. And not only that, but you get this like kick in the gut that feels like, you know, somebody, you know, you feel like you got kicked in the wrong place or you're just like nauseous. So I got this like really nauseous feeling. And I was like, Oh no. Once I realized, cause I'd been talking to one of my friends and he was like, you want to make sure you got two factor authentication on all your stuff and da, 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 da. And so I have like anything related to crypto, it's all two-factor authentication. Nobody can get into any of my stuff. Plus, we talk about remaining secure quite a bit. So all of my stuff is offline. It's in you know paper wallets, or it's in a hardware, or my uh, or it's in it's in other places. It's like I literally have very little crypto accessible online. I have maybe a hundred and fifty bucks in my Coinbase account, but that's just because of the shift debit card, right? And so. Knowing all that stuff was going down, you know, it was just, it was just a challenge. So, so once they have access to your phone number, they can then go, if you do not have two factor authentication on, on your Gmail, which you're going to need to do, go and do that. Because if not, if you have your phone number as the ability for them to text you a code to get in to reset your password, that's what happened. I did not have my Gmail on two factor authentication. I did not have my travisright.com email set up on two factor. Uh, authentication. I, I do now, but I didn't then. And so th- this hacker gained access to my Gmail, my other email, and then they also were able to do the exact same thing on Twitter. That's that was one of the things that I that I thought of. So now now it's almost like a chess match because somebody has your number on on a device they control. They now have access to my Gmail. They have access to my TravisWright.com email. They have access to my Apple ID. They have access to my Twitter account. So I thought, well, what's what's the most important ones in the route that I want to go to get these fixed, right? And so uh, once you have your phone, once I you know contact T-Mobile and they were so apologetic, and the the dude that I talked to to get it put back on my end was very nice and apologetic. Uh, however, you know, I did still tweet to, to, to T-Mobile, my disgust, and I need to talk to somebody within PR there because I think there's a lot of people talking about this with this happening only with T-Mobile. And so I had to go in. I got my phone number back. Once that's, once that's live back on my thing, then I can go into my Gmails. I could get that, re, you know, the reset my password, send the text to me. I got that set up. Boom. Got my Travis Wright email set up first. Because that's one that's connected to bad crypto and I have files and stuff on there. So I wanted to get that one done from first. 
Then I wanted to make sure that my backup email was secure. So I went to my Gmail, got that one secure as well. And then I noticed that once I got those set up, the person had had accessed my Twitter account and then was posting pictures of vaginas as my as my image right as my my avatar and like horrible uh pictures as my you know cover photo and then they were tweeting all these naked photos as well and changed my name on twitter from travis wright to hashtag bitcoin bandits and uh so there's there's some group apparently out there called bitcoin bandits and that 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 there i i had the assumption that they were going after my crypto Knowing that all of my crypto was locked down, they got nothing, that had to upset them. So now they were lashing out on my Twitter. And so I went in, changed my password on Twitter, but then that person was able to somehow override that and gain access to Twitter again. Uh, I didn't see any other email in there aside from mine, but somehow I was able to get back in the account and I looked at the applications. I noticed there was this application called tweetdelete.net that had been recently authorized. And so knowing that, I was immediately revoked that. I revoked all these other apps that was on my account. And then I noticed that there's a substantial amount of tweets that have been deleted from my, from my online account there. And, but really it was just like, I just want to get this squared away. Twitter at that point, I was like, I don't even care. So what I did was I contacted support, let them know that, hey, my account has been hacked. Somebody's trying to brute force and get into my account again after I've already gotten it back. Uh, they've changed my they've changed my username or they've changed my uh, images. They're tweeting a bunch of rude stuff and they're actually also deleting my tweets. So I have not heard back from Twitter yet, but they locked the account down so nobody can actually access it right now, which is great. So that that to me was was uh, a pretty good uh, sign. And knowing that they were not able to get into any of my cryptocurrency. See, they had zero luck with that. Uh, and in fact, aside from my my Twitter account that it's that's currently frozen pending this investigation, I would say I got out of this thing relatively unscathed. Well, you know, we've been preaching to take your Bitcoin and your other currencies off of exchanges and store them somewhere safe. And that's what you and I do. I mean, there's nobody's going to get it. My Bitcoin or any of my stuff, there's dust in my accounts. I only use them for trading and, and then I remove them and everything is in hard, you know, storage and it's, it's not on the internet. It's just not, nobody gets it that way. And so uh sad day that that's what uh, they discovered uh, that there was nothing there to get, although they did have a little victory in, in accomplishing the hack. Uh, but it is moving towards a happy ending, isn't it, Travis? What happened? Well, really, one of the things, the, the, the longest thing that it that took me to figure out was I got online with with Google, uh, a Google support rep, and was trying to figure out how to turn 2FA on on my Travis Wright account because I could do it on Gmail. That was no problem. But on Travis Wright, you actually have to use your super admin account, go into the settings for your users and allow two factor authentication as an option. That, that had never been checked. So that's why even though I had tried to two factor authenticate that account before, every time I would click on it, it would allow me to type my password in. And then it was like I was in a loop. I would hit send and then it would refresh and then it would show me the exact same page. Okay. Do two factor authentication. Ah, and then it would get me that. So I was like, I couldn't figure that out. And uh, then so once I had that all stuff done, I still actually I realized I hadn't connected and re taken back my Apple ID, which I hadn't thought about. And so then then I go, oh, wait a second. I wonder it, what's going on with that. So I went back and now I have my phone number. So I was able to, you know, get that set up. And then, oh, by the, I was actually able to reset the password. Oh, by the way, in Apple, you can do two factor authentication as well, which saved me here. So track this with me. Once that happened, I was able to go in and change my password and immediately turn on two-factor authentication. Once that happened, the dude must have received a notification that said, hey, this ID doesn't work anymore. So he was in there trying to do the exact same thing, trying to gain access back to my to my account. He was trying to log in. He couldn't log in. I changed the password, got two-factor authentication set up. But then I could see that he was trying to reset passwords. And every time he was trying to reset a password, it popped up on my phone with that six-digit um, two-factor authentication code that he, w- he never had access to. But 
Here's the funny part, Mr. Mr. Joel Com. The phone that this guy put my ID on, he left his location on. And he also had find my iPhone on. And so, Justin, out there in Worth, Illinois, uh, <laughs> I know exactly where you live. I've seen exactly where your house is. I know exactly where you dwell. So, you know, what's so funny is the the, uh, the police there know about this scenario as well. And so, good luck with all of that because, oh, oh, and then the final uh, uh, icing on the on the cake, Mr. Joe Com is since he had find my iPhone on there, one of my options after annoying him with a few, you know, beeps and stuff like find, like beeping his phone and sending him messages, I was able to delete all the contents on his iPhone remotely from find my iPhone. Wow. And there's the, the coup de gras. Yeah. It's one of those um, things, man. I, I have this like, I'm a real friendly guy. I don't do any harm to anyone. But if somebody tries to come at me, I, I have this thing inside of me. It's like, I will fuck you twice as hard. And if you come at me and I, but I'm, I'm never, I ne I'm never aggressive towards anyone in any other scenario. But if somebody tries to screw me over, or one of my friends over, I have this tendency to do whatever I can to get you. And, uh, so it's really not a good idea to, to mess with me in some ways because I have that sort of hacker mentality too. It's like, I know how to find information out. I'm just not a dark hat guy. I don't do those things. I know how they work. I could easily do it. I mean, and one other thing is it's, is it's, it's somewhat, you know, embarrassing in a way because I was the global digital strategist for semantic for the Norton brand. Right. And. It just goes to show I'm very secure on most of the stuff that I can set up. I make sure that all my crypto's off. I make sure, you know, I have a passcode at T-Mobile. I made sure to not, you know, make sure if anything's happening that I need to know about, make sure to message me, to text me, to let me know, right? And like the weakest link within my security, aside from not having two-factor authentication on my Gmails uh, and, and my Apple, the weakest link was the person at T-Mobile. There is people out there doing social engineering, and I'm going to include a video in the show notes so you can see how easy it is for someone to socially engineer and take access over of your accounts, faking noise in the background, like maybe you have a baby and you have a woman call in and they're going through the, this rigmarole. You can, you can watch this video that's going to be in the show notes that shows you how easy it is for somebody to grab your phone account. And most of the time it's only happening with T-Mobile. It's not happening with some of these other ones. So T-Mobile has a really big problem. So if you're in cryptocurrency, uh, T-Mobile is probably not the phone for you. The, the uncarrier, exactly. You don't, I don't, I don't know that that's going to be a wise, you know, I'm moving off of T-Mobile as soon as I can. Matter of fact. Well, I would love to hear, uh, their CEO, John Legere, you know, address this and because I think it's, it's important. Uh, I'm on a different carrier that requires a very specific pin before they'll even talk to me. And if the pin is put in a few times wrong, they lock it down completely. And, um, you know, here's the lesson. Lock down your stuff. Use two-factor authentication on everything that you can and uh, make sure that whoever you're with is, is you know, got your security first and foremost uh, at the front here. And uh, would it be safe to say that the Federal Bureau of Investigation would uh, be interested in looking at what this uh, this person did? Because I believe that there's at least one felony count mm. in uh, in this. Yes. Well, I did have a nice conversation with the fine folks over there. And so, yeah, now that I know exactly where the guy lives, I know exactly who he is. I know his first name and his last name. I know that he lives with his his parents, <laughs> right? Probably in the basement, probably about 400 pounds. How about this, Travis? What if what if this person emails you and owns up to it? And like, I don't know, they, they need to have some sort of promise to never do this again or something. Uh, it, it would be nice to see somebody set straight before they were arrested. Yeah, you may want to do that there, Bitcoin Bandit. Uh, go ahead and email us at badcryptopodcast at gmail.com. And uh, if you actually show some remorse, then maybe uh, all this evidence that I have now won't be transferred. But either way, man, it's like doing that is not good. You're, you're getting yourself some bad karma for one. And all that shit comes back around on you. It does. You may not think that it does. But it all comes back around, and uh, you're not going to be too happy when it does. Yeah, just ask Jordan Belfort. 
Uh, of course, don't ask him now because <laughs> now he's, I guess, doing okay. But he uh, he did his time, and uh, you don't want to do time. So you got a life ahead of you. And if you know, if some of these people would just use their skills for good instead of evil, you know, imagine how they can change the world for the better. Make the world a better place. Do what you can to add value to the lives of others, and not. Be a selfish jerk, and uh, then the world of opportunity opens up for you. Well, you know, I hope everybody's taken lessons from this. Just secure your stuff and uh, and be smart about this. Uh, certainly, the carriers and anybody that has access to sensitive information, they're going to have to get their act together because this, this doesn't play. And really, I can't believe that Twitter doesn't even have two-factor authentication. That's just... That's crazy to me. If you got a Facebook account, you should turn on two factor authentication. It's right there in your settings. Go, in fact, spend some time going through all of your settings on Facebook. Look at how much of their, your stuff they're looking at and keeping track of and lock down your account to a reasonable amount where you're in full control of it. And I'm going to get off my soapbox because we're way over time, especially if you're in crypto. If you're in crypto and you're not securing things with two factor authentication and just kind of being sloppy. I mean, there are some really, really intelligent people in this space that I know. Like I had a friend of mine who was like a top v- VP at some big banks and he got in and he had his my ether wallet got hacked into, right? And it's like really super smart, savvy people. It can happen if it can happen to me, it can happen to anyone. And that's just not me saying, oh hey, cool to do. Um, that's not. I mean, I'm pretty sophisticated. I know how this shit works. And for me to get hacked, that means you can easily get hacked. And oh, 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 one of the best solutions, which a few people have mentioned so far, is to maybe actually get a burner phone where you have a uh, a SIM card, maybe a prepaid SIM card you could get off of eBay or something, put it in the phone, and that you don't give that number to anyone. The only thing that happens there is you do your two-factor authentication on that phone, uh, You and then if you need to, you, you want to go ahead and put your, your, you know, that as your emergency number if you need to get, uh, if you need to get, um, reset your passwords. But having an extra phone that's just kind of an old phone that sits there and that's its only job, that's probably a pretty good idea. Several people have mentioned that they do that and they keep it off most of the time. Nobody has access to that number. It's a SIM card that nobody could switch off to another one. I like that idea. I think that's my, my new, my new thing. There you go. Burner phones for everybody. Well, hey, thanks everybody for listening to this episode. Hope it has been enlightening for you and uh, be sure to review us and subscribe to us and like us and engage with us and reach out to us. How about a voicemail? Yep, we've got uh, Google Voice standing by for you. Call 708-885-9030. And Travis, are you impressed that I finally remembered the number? Yeah, you know what's also interesting is that that where our number is, that 708 number, that's exactly where... <laughs> My, my my hack happened in that particular area. Yeah, but I do want to say this, folks. I want to say this. Stay bad, but do good stuff. Who's bad? The Bad Crypto Podcast is a production of Bad Crypto, LLC. The content of the show, the videos, and the website is provided for educational, informational, and entertainment purposes only. It's not intended to be and does not constitute financial, investment, or trading advice of any kind. You shouldn't make any decisions as to finances, investing, trading, or anything else based on this information without undertaking independent due diligence and consultation with a professional financial advisor. Please understand that the trading of Bitcoin's and alternative cryptocurrencies have potential risks involved. Anyone wishing to invest in any of the currencies or tokens mentioned on this podcast should first seek their own independent professional financial advisor.